Hello, and thank you so much for joining us today. This is Flighting, Feedback, and Forza Horizon 5. My name is Dean Katsaros, and I'm a program manager with the Xbox Insider Program. And I'm David Alexander, also a program manager for the Xbox Insider Program. Later, we'll be joined by Ryan Halseth, a producer for Turn 10 Studios, to discuss his experiences while flighting Forza Horizon 5. Thank you, David. So our agenda today is pretty simple. We'll talk about flighting concept and tools, We'll look at getting feedback using the Xbox Insider program. And finally, as David mentioned, we'll have a discussion about how Forza Horizon 5 has used flighting. So what is flighting? At its core, it's providing content and experiences in retail, not a dev sandbox, uh, the same env pr production environment as release games. So why do you flight? Simply put, it's to get feedback and improve your game over time. So when do you flight? The answer is pretty much whenever you want. You can do it before you launch. Uh, you can go way before you launch. All you need is a, a stub file, uh, a blank build, if you will. Uh, you publish your retail, you get a few people to test it out, and off you go. And you can flight after you launch, continuing to get feedback from your users and improve your game over time. Whether you flight before or after, or both, it's entirely up to you. We've had many titles that have flighted with us in a variety of combinations, including some that have spanned the entire life cycle of their product. So, this is all great, but it's no good if you don't have the tools to ensure your flight is secure. With Partner Center, those tools are available to you, and it really is central to how you flight. When configured correctly, only your intended audience will see your flight. So we have a number of tools that are available to you, you can take advantage of, you can see on the right side, we have private audience that hides the game from the store, except for those uh, who have access. Uh, tokens and codes are a tool, you don't always have to have them, um, but if you do, and you're using the Xbox Insider program, they can be hidden. We have embargo, this hides Xbox social features such as uh, presence, uh, last game played, achievements, and so forth. And then you have a choice of using a separate product or package flighting. Using a separate product means you're using a completely distinct product from your main game. Whereas package flighting means you're using a different build of your main game. You can go either way, and there can be a variety of reasons why you would pick one or the other. Talk to your partner manager and they can help you decide which is right for you. All right, so the other part of how you flight um, is discussing two methods for doing so. At the core of it, we have Partner Center. This is self-service, good for small audiences, and you can take advantage of those security features I mentioned previously. And then we have the Xbox Insider program. With this, the core aspects of flighting available in Partner Center are taken to the next level with some really great features you can take advantage of. One of which is being able to easily expand to large audiences, which brings me to my next slide about who you can flight to. You can start with any group of individuals that you manage yourself. You can start with your studio, maybe have a core group of fans you want to give access to uh, before you announce. MVPs, influencers, friends and family, the choice is yours. And then we have sets of predefined groups you can take advantage of. We have a group of Xbox employees and a larger group of Microsoft employees, all of an, under NDA. And you can cap that to any number. If you wanna limit it to 1,000, 2,000, you can do that. And then we have our public insiders for when you wanna go much bigger. If you want, you can segment that group to those who have pre-ordered your game or who own your other games. Uh, if you're planning on launching into Game Pass, you could grant early access to Game Pass subscribers. If you need to limit to certain console types, such as Xbox Series X consoles only, we can do that too. And again, we can cap to any number. As I mentioned, those groups are available when you flight with the Xbox Insider program. And with that, I'll hand it over to David to talk more about that program. In the previous slides, Dean talked about what flighting is and why you should consider it for your game. 
Microsoft Partner Center offers a powerful and easy to use feature set that allows you to manage your own pre-release process on your own schedule. I'm gonna talk about what your studio can unlock when you flight through the Xbox Insider program. The Xbox Insider program is a managed service. It's available to you at no extra charge as part of the Microsoft publishing ecosystem. Through that, you'll work with our team to develop a pre-release and flighting plan that accomplishes your goals and gets you the feedback you need to make the best decision for your game and its release. Along with your partner manager, Xbox Insider Program staff will answer questions about your game's configuration, the audience you wish to reach, and help develop a plan to get bug feedback, surveys, and player sentiment. The picture on the slide shows a screen capture of the Xbox Insider Hub, which is the app that Xbox Insiders use on Xbox consoles and Windows PCs to interact with your pre-release game. The join mechanism is very easy. Users will navigate to that flight, select it, and will then see a join button on screen. As Dean said before, you never need to show a code and you don't have to worry about a five by five token ending up somewhere you don't expect it. The code redemption process is transparent to the user and happens server-side through Xbox Insider services that power this app. Engineering actionable feedback is the core of the Xbox Insider program. Next, I'm gonna talk about two methods you'll have access to in order to collect feedback on your flight. We'll talk about Reporter Problem, which is the bug filing tool on Xbox consoles, and then I'll talk about the built-in surveys that you have access to through the Xbox Insider program. On screen, I've got a view of the reporter problem tool that players use for logging in-game bugs. Players will use this form to record a title for their bug, categorize it to your game in flight, and can then add a description that will detail the unexpected experience that they had. You'll see on the right side of this screenshot two additional pictures. One is the actual frame on screen when the player initiated report a problem, and the bottom picture is a video clip accessed from Game DVR that shows the last 30 seconds of gameplay. Links to both of these will be included in your bug report, so you'll be able to see exactly what the player saw when they filed this problem report. I just showed you what the user sees when they file a bug, but what do you get to see once these bug reports come to your studio? Well, on screen, I have a picture of an entry in the bug feedback report that you'll have access to. This picture shows a table that contains some metadata, including an identifier, when the bug was filed, where the bug was filed, certain app and OS versions, along with the hardware type that the bug was filed on. You'll notice in this table that there's also a link to the attached screenshot and video that I mentioned earlier. At the bottom of this entry, you see the actual verbatim that the player recorded in their description, detailing the unexpected circumstances which caused them to file this bug. Now, because the Xbox Insider program is a global program with millions of players all over the world, of course we have insiders that don't speak English as their primary language. Through Microsoft Translation Services, built right into reporter problem feedback, we use machine translation to convert this verbatim into English, which is easier for some studios to read and understand. As you can see from the picture on screen, we've converted this bug feedback entry from French to English, right in line with the original report. In addition to bug feedback, you'll have access to the Xbox Insider Hub's easy to use survey capability. We worked closely with Xbox Research to identify six priority areas that studios most often request feedback for and turn them into standard surveys within the Hub. These surveys don't require any extra work to set up and are pre-localized to all Xbox markets. These areas include satisfaction, gameplay, multiplayer capabilities, game controls, approachability and ease of use, and accessibility. Because visualization is a powerful tool for understanding large sets of data at a glance, we chart these answers for you and display them in your studio reporting. On screen, you'll see two pictures. Both are pie charts that break down a set of responses into areas represented by player answers. Both of these charts indicate the survey question and have aggregate response metrics at the top and the answer breakdown in the chart area below. These charts give you a quick view of what your players are thinking and feeling while they engage with your flight. You'll have access to all this feedback reporting when you flight your game through the Xbox Insider program. 
on screen, I have a number of titles that have flighted with us in recent years. In total, we flighted over 40 titles just from our first party studios alone. In addition to those, we've flighted hundreds of third party titles over the years as well. One of the titles on the screen is Forza Horizon 5, which is a great segue to bring in Ryan so we can talk more about that one. Ryan, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, tell us what you do. Yeah, I'm Ryan Halseth, producer at Turn 10. Um, primarily focused on flighting and release management for the Forza franchise. Specifically worked on the releases of Forza Horizon 4 and Forza Horizon 5. Awesome. So uh, on the last screen, I showed all these Forza Horizon titles that have gone through flighting in some form or another. Uh, uh, two and three were actually flighted as content updates for the Xbox One X, I re remember. And then uh, Forza Horizon 4 and 5 went through flighting all up, beginning to end uh, the whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so if we look at Forza Horizon 5, the most recent title, um, tell us about how you approached flighting from the beginning as you were planning this all out. It's a great question. So we focus on flighting super early on. It's really at the beginning of pre-production. Um, right when we decide to spin up a product and partner center, we spin up our flight. And there's, there's a couple key reasons for that. One, it aligns really well with how our development process works and our sprint planning. At the end of each sprint, we get a build into retail. We can test, make sure it's working, get our services behind it, make sure multiplayer is hooked up. We start thinking about Xbox Live a bit early on. Um, and then second is really, you know, we just came out of a, a pretty bad pandemic. You know, hopefully we're, we're at the end, near the end of it. And now entering into a world where we're in hybrid work. Um, and really being able to deliver builds on retail kits at people's homes without having to worry about divvying up dev kits and just having that experience of, you know, if you have a PC, you have an Xbox, we can get builds up in our developers' houses, production uh, team houses, get them playing the game early on. And we see that as super valuable. Um, to get their game really up and running retail as soon as we can. Uh, earlier in the talk, I mentioned how you can flight with uh, Partner Center mm -hmm. or with the Xbox Insider program or both. Uh, so talk about how you made the decision on which way to go for that. Yeah, I know. I think, you know, if you have a smaller studio, it, it makes perfect sense, you know, Utilize the tools of Partner Center. You can get a, a build up and running super quickly and, and just get up and flight, get it up and running and retail. Um, you know, for us, I make the call early on to utilize the Insider program. We find a lot of value in interacting with the Insider team, um, you know, working through the plans and our goals, what we want to get out of flighting. Um, and then also, you know, we have a lot of great documentation and, and a lot of the team has used Insider Program. So it's, you know, just grabbing gamer tags or emails associated with those gamer tags um, and easily entering them in and boom, right there, people are downloading their builds, they're engaging with their flight early on. So, you know, there's plus and minuses each way. We, we really enjoy using the Insider Program. So as you progressed mm -hmm. using the Insider Program, the, you started really early mm -hmm. And you progressed, your, your, your audience got bigger and bigger. Um, so maybe talk to that and just how, how, how you did that audience progression. Yeah, one of the reasons why we utilize inside our program early on is we know we're going to eventually scale. Um, so a good example of that, when we first kick off flighting early in pre-production, as we talked about earlier, it might only be you know, a few engineers and release management in there, you know, make sure everything's hooked up correctly. Uh, making sure that you know the build pipelines are working like they want, like we want. Xbox Live's plugged in, um, so really it's a small group at first, um, with just engineers, release management. From there, we'll bring in more of the production team as we want more people to start engaging with the build, and we feel like we're stable enough to do so. Then we'll bring in you know all of Turn Ten and Playground Games, right? Start getting feedback from a wider audience, and then eventually, as we march towards release, we're expanding out to thousands of people through Xbox Studios. Um, and really leveraging that feedback from them and just kind of keep expanding the audience. And really the power of Insider Program allows us to do that because it just easily scale through the process. Right, and then, so during that process, you've got, you said thousands of people from, from internal studios mm -hmm. prior to launch, mm -hmm. prior to announce, I think, in some cases. And, mm -hmm. and so you had to keep everything secure and hidden. And I, I talked about the tools that are available. So how did that go for you? Yeah, as, as we, as you noted earlier, right, we've been flighting with the Insider Program and Insider Hub within Partner Center for, for a long time now. And really through the years, seeing the program evolve and using it, we've built a lot of confidence in the security, right? We leverage private audience, we leverage package flighting. 
we leverage Embargo and using those tools is built just, we just know our, our, built, our game's secure, right? As you, as you noted, right? We are doing this pre announce on all our games, early in pre-production. The, the community doesn't know what we're working on at that point, but we just have a ton of confidence in the insider program, that team, and the security of the tools. And so the last thing I want to ask is, I remember when we started, you came to us about Forza Horizon 5 flighting, and you've developed a, a concept in the studio called Flawless Launch. Mm. Uh, so talk about that and how that relates. Yeah, Flawless Launch is kind of our North Star. It's what we strive for. Um, and really the way to think about that is, you know, we want to make sure that at day one, you know, when people open the box, and maybe that's an old term now, we're more in the, the digital universe, you know, it's, it's, you know, we're releasing it digitally across storefronts for the most part, but um, we wanna make sure that day one experience is a solid experience. And really flighting helps eliminate that, right? I always like to say in the release management world, don't assume anything, assumes a bad word. So just, you know, get rid of that assumption through flighting because you're really getting things up and running in retail. Um, you're confirming that your services are up and running, your multiplayer is, is up and running, and that on day one when people first jump in at midnight, wherever they're in the world when you do that launch, that is just a great experience for them. So that's our goal, and it's really a, a total studio effort across all our studios, and uh, yeah, flighting really helps us achieve that. That's a, that's a really cool philosophy, Ryan, of flawless launch. Uh, it seems like you do learn a lot about how people are using your game before it's released through flighting. But one of the things we haven't touched on just yet is the unstructured nature of flighting. So you're putting your build out there in retail for people to use however they're gonna use it. I'm sure that drives feedback, uh, both maybe in terms of celebration, but maybe also some frustration when something truly unexpected comes in. I spoke a little bit about how we collect that feedback, but I didn't touch at all really on how studios use that feedback. I wonder if you can share with this audience uh, anything you've learned about the mm -hmm. feedback process itself, maybe volume management or even what kinds of decisions do you make based on that feedback? Yeah, um, we find a lot of value in the feedback we get from the insider program, right? We have both surveys and report a problem. So when we enter ship room, we get closer to release, we are using that report a problem. We're getting a lot of bugs coming through. That sits alongside what our internal test teams are finding. We're actually logging those bugs with our what our test teams find. And in ship room, those get triaged like any other bug. And we are really prioritizing what we want to fix. And it's great because you know test teams are finding a lot of things. You're getting people maybe that are big fans of the game playing the game in different ways you didn't expect and finding issues that you can resolve before launch. I mean, one example. Um, when we flighted Forza Horizon 4 out to Xbox Studios, there was a save profile bug that was found that if that, you know, it's a few weeks before retail, if that made it out, would have corrupted a ton of save profiles. So something we were happy, really happy to find before releasing that game. Forza Horizon 5, we utilized surveys, right? We actually changed some of the, the difficulty balance in some of our races through what, what our, you know, the fans of our game across Xbox Studio were playing and what they were discovering. So we've used both. We use both quite a bit, and they're uh, big tools for us as we march towards release. That makes sense. Okay, so it sounds like you have found some significant things that you ended up fixing. Yeah, absolutely. But you said you use the, the surveys as well to kind of understand how people are playing it. It sounds mm -hmm. like maybe you use some of that for roadmap decision making. Do you use it in that way? Yeah, yeah, we use it all kinds of way, right? Like I said, difficulty balancing and how we go about races. Um, when we look at some different DLC content, we try to flight that out as early as possible and just get some early feedback and okay. thoughts from the community as much as possible. I want to change gears with my next question here, uh, which is actually inspired by an onboarding call that we had with another partner just this week. Uh, production and release is not easy. There are definitely challenges associated with that. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that even the Forza franchise has faced some challenges in flight as you learn and continue to iterate on the game. Can you maybe share some examples of some challenges that you've faced in flight and maybe what you've learned based on them? Yeah, um, we see flighting as something that removes a lot of those challenges when we talk about production and release, because again, we're removing that assumption. We're getting ready to go out to retail with building confidence. Um, you know, and through the years, the tools have been getting better. Um, certification process has been easier and quicker. Um, and really, you know, we find it as, as a very powerful tool set to get our game out in front of people that are fans, whether internal or external, and, and really build that feedback. So I don't have any really specific challenges because I just think, you know, we've been close to that process and really has, have helped it improve over the years. So I know that 
ahead of all of the flights, you're engaging with us pretty mm -hmm. early yeah. and we are doing a lot of pre-planning. Mm -hmm. Would you agree from your experience that a lot of that pre-planning helps to eliminate flighting challenges themselves? Absolutely true. Yeah. So, you know, that is one of my recommendations is get ahead of it early. Um, make sure that you're engaging with the insider program and talk about your goals. Awesome. Now, I've got one last question mm -hmm. here for you. Uh, you've got a ton of experience in production. Uh, you've produced several titles themselves. You've even spent years with them before they go into release. Uh, I'm sure that you've developed some of your own best practices for flighting. Can you maybe share with us uh, yeah. some of those best practices? Yeah, one thing I, I tell people is, you know, flighting is a one person's job. It does take the entire studio, right? It takes services team, it takes productions team, it takes your test teams, release management teams, of course. And it's really go into flighting with a goal. What do you want to get out of it? If you can go in with what you want out of flighting, you'll just get a ton more. So that's why I chat with you guys and, and other people within the Insider program super early. We talk about what are we trying to achieve for this game and this title. And there's obviously many things you can do. There's a lot of reasons to spin up flighting just to get that, flex that muscle, that early release. And, and the thing about flighting is that, um, you know, you're in a retail environment. You are getting testing done in retail really quickly. And when it comes to release, you've already been actually releasing in retail for quite a while where it kind of removes a lot of that doubt and some of that scary portion of, you know, getting ready to release to a huge audience, because really, you know, maybe to simplify it a little bit, you're unchecking some boxes and you're setting some dates. You've already been in retail for a long time. You're just expanding how many people are coming in to see your product. So really focusing on that um, and get some good goals in front of you, what you want to do. And then, of course, engage with the Insider program early. And I think I have a really successful time flighting your game. Great. Thank you, Ryan, very much for being with us today. Thanks for having me. I want to dovetail on that and provide some additional best practices with your audience when running your flights. Provide clear direction and goals to your users. The more you tell them what you want to get out of your flights, the more engaged they'll be, and the more likely they'll give you better quality feedback. Incentivizing users is huge. If you have a digital item that you can give to them as a way of saying thanks for participating, the more likely they'll stay with you for current and future flights. Using short playtest windows is another big one. We found over the years that participation declines when you have long flights that go on for weeks or even months. So keeping it shorter will help keep everyone more focused and it will help drive demand for future flights. And finally, tell the user what you learned from your playtest session. If you let them know this and then what you've changed for the next session, they'll feel they've made a difference for your game and they'll be more likely to come back to you. And finally, if you want to get started with flighting and take advantage of any of these tools, contact your partner manager and they will help you get the ball rolling. So that's it for me. On behalf of David Alexander and Ryan Halseth, I'm Dean Gutseros. Thank you so much for joining us. Take care. <laughs>